Welcome everyone. C good afternoon. My name is Prince. I work for the Sonic team in Microsoft and I'm currently engaged in the Smart Switch project. So today we are going to present and discuss about the Smart Switch in data centers and building limitless network. So at a high level, the agenda is to cover the hardware concept, um, the mo motivation for Smart Switch, and I'll touch base on a use case and uh, a critical high availability feature uh, with smart switch and uh, and then <coughs> a few slides on the sonic architecture uh, for smart switch so with that this is the hardware concept so uh, we are proposing a 2 ru switch which host a 32 by 400 gig uh, switching asic um, and then eight dpus so here we can use 28 400 gig uh, front panel ports and then um, uh, which can be connected to the peer devices, and then an internal 4x400 to the hosted DPUs. So this is at a high level on the hardware concept, and uh, uh, with the scalability and performance requirement, uh, <coughs> uh, we are considering at least 128 gigabit of RAM on the control plane. So essentially a 12.8 terabit of ASIC, and then uh, multiple DPUs hosted in the same 2RU switch. All right. So coming to the motivation, why smart switch? So as you have uh, uh, seen in the previous slide, it's a powerful device hosting multiple DPUs, right? So uh, this provides us a resource pooling capability. So smart switch is here augmenting the smart NIC capability and um, enabling like high scalable resource allocation, utilizing the NPU cap capabilities for high availability and packet redirections. The other thing is this smart switch as a concept is uh, powerful, right? Like it has a powerful NPU and highly scalable and memory DPUs, high memory DPUs. So uh, the DPUs are programmable to fit uh, custom pipeline and can be offloaded for internet routes or STN policies. So that's um, high level on the motivation for smart switch. Now, this is a slide on the use case. Uh, we have a deployment in the Microsoft data center. Um, you can see some uh, servers that are connected to the Tor and uh, some VMs running on the Hyper-V switch. So the VFP currently holds all the policies for the packets that are sent from the VM to the internet destinations, right? So these VFP policies with the smart switch model can be offloaded to the Dash-enabled DPUs. So uh, this is where we can see high scale uh, and performance uh, by offloading all these STN policies to the uh, to the smart switch um, hosted DPUs. So <clears throat> with that, um, I want to touch base on a, a proposal on the uh, smart switch. So uh, for this uh, discussion, um, I'm uh, considering smart switch at the T1 layer um, for all the uh, rest of the slides on discussing about the packet flows and all, but the smart switch can be deployed at the T0 as well. Uh, so we, uh, where we, uh, I've uh, shown it as the smart switch tour, um, or it can be smart switch T1. So like I said in this uh, presentation, I'll be considering smart switch at the T1 layer. So why smart switch at the T1 layer? Because it provides a, a redundancy and also um, the high availability. So high availability is a key feature for uh, the smart switch deployment. So for the, the next few slides, we talk about the high availability um, with smart switch. So what is high availability? So the essential concept is like a single smart switch or a DPU going down should not impact the existing flows, right? It cannot uh, impact the traffic uh, or, or, or service hosted on the DPU. So how this is achieved, it's, it's by flow sync, which we'll uh, talk about in the future slides. So by having an HA pair, an active or a standby DPU, and by performing flow sync, we can achieve the uh, um, the HA functionality. And uh, smart switch NPUs also can detect DPU failures in a fraction of a second, like using BFT or other uh, key fly mechanism. And um, basically, the HA goals are like existing connections um, uh, should, be, um, should be having less interrupt, and all new connections should work reliably after the plan switchover, and minimal impact to the, uh, to the uh, uh, existing flows for the plant switchover, and no performance impact on CPS or PPS, okay? So, uh, like I said, the next few slides, we'll 
touch base on the high availability and how that is achieved in smart switch uh, topology. So an active and a standby resource allocation, uh, it can happen from two DPUs on the T1 layer uh, belonging to two smart switches. And one DPU serve here as the active, making flow decisions, while the other one DPU can serve as the standby and only act accepting flows from the active. So in the steady state, all flows shall be inline synced from active to standby. When the DPU joins a new HA pair, it can uh, do the bulk sync of the flow. So as you can see on the diagram, when a source VM is sending packet to the destination, it goes to the active. Uh, we have slides on how the packet uh, flow happens to the active uh, DPU. But when the source VM sends the first packet, the sync packet, the active will um, get the packet and uh, process it. It will send the uh, sync packet with the metadata to the standby, thus creating flow, and the standby can send an acknowledgment back to active. So that way, the flow is synchronized between the active and standby. And once the acknowledgment is received, the active can forward this packet to the destination VM. So this is the, the flow sync mechanism um, enabling the HA. Now, um, as we have uh, seen in the previous slide, the, uh, this presentation assumes that the smart switches are deployed at the T1 layer. So now the packet from the tier two can come and land on any of the tier, uh, tier one smart switches because it, it will be advertising the same WIPs to the, um, uh, to the peer devices. So once, the smart switch, uh, uh, once a smart switch receives a packet, the NPU on the smart switch, um, it can look into the packet in the packet for, uh, headers and then determine which DPU is active for that particular flow. And um, if it lands on the DPU that is hosted locally, it will just forward the packet to the DPU. If it is on a remote NPU or a remote DPU, then the NPU um, on, on this smart switch can uh, encapsulate the packet to the remote, in, uh, remote smart switch and then it can decapsulate and forward it to the local DPU. So this is how uh, the packet flow happens um, wh wh when the T1 receives the packet. All right? So <clears throat> this is how the pairing is achieved. Um, in this, uh, you know, the DPUs are running ENI workload. So ENI, we can just consider it as a representation of VM. And ENI holds all the STN policies and the routing and the NSGs uh, belonging to the ENI is programmed on this DPU. So these are the policies that gets evaluated for a VM. So here in this diagram, DPU A and DPU E are being paired for ENI1 and ENI2, right? So, um, so for uh, each of these ENIs, one will be active and the other uh, one can stay, uh, uh, stay a standby. So these are the paired H, uh, HA uh, pair for that particular ENI. And, uh, and these uh, DPUs will be flow syncing uh, uh, all the flows between the active and standby. So one thing to highlight here is the active standby concept is ENI level. So it's not like one DPU will be active for all the ENIs. By having ENI level uh, active standby um, uh, deployment, we can, uh, we can load balance the traffic between the two DPUs. So here, uh, ENI1 is active on DPU1, and ENI2 is active on DPU2. So anytime the packet, and these are belonging to two different smart switches, right? So uh, Any time when the packet comes on one of the NPU, like here, uh, NPU1 and NPU2 receiving the um, packet destined to ENI1, um, it can just forward the packet to the corresponding active uh, DPU. So, so that's uh, touch basing on the high availability feature. So with this, because uh, it's an existing T1 uh, we have and that and, and, and enhancing that for the smart switch uh, capability, we have some extra requirements as compared to the standard T1, right? So one is, as, as I mentioned, the packet can land on any of the uh, T1 sets, so it has to do an NCAP and DCAP. So we need the VXLAN DCAP and NCAP capability. And also, to determine which uh, uh, DPU is active for an ENI, then NPU has to look into the inner header, right? Which, is, uh, which can be the inner MAC or inner, um, IP, so the ACL match capabilities for that uh, uh, that inner uh, uh, headers are required for at the NPU layer, and uh, of course the last one is uh, um, the BFD offloading capability to to determine the failovers at a at a um, um, fraction of a second. So these are um, 
just to uh, list down all the NPU requirements that we want for the smart switch uh, uh, deployment. The next two slides, we are going to talk about the Sonic software architecture on the uh, switch. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so you can see that Sonic running on both the NPU side and the DPU side. But the Sonic on the DPU is a, a, a slim version of the uh, uh, Sonic because we don't want to run all the containers uh, on the DPU side. So it's a, um, a stripped down version. And we have the SWSs there. But almost all the databases for the DPU with all the scaling policies and the mapping tables and the routing tables, we don't want to store it on the DPU side. And that's why it is shown on the left side where the Sonic running on the NPU side can um, hold all those data. Because uh, this way, we can release the memory for, uh, of the DPU for uh, connection tracking and um, other uh, cool stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, uh, on the Sonic architecture at, at, at a high level. The next one. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about how the programming happens through Sonic to the DPU. So this is on the DPU side. Um, a Dash container or a JNMI container that can that's running on the, the DPU can accept all the, uh, uh, the APIs. And it can program the Dash objects, right? Or, or the, um, uh, uh, the DPU level objects on the Redis. And the typical flow of uh, ORC agent subscribing to that and then pushing all these uh, through the side layer to the DPU. So the DPU sync D, um, it, can, uh, it can program the DPU with all these uh, uh, dash uh, SI APIs, through the uh, dash SI APIs. So yeah, so that's uh, on the uh, architecture. The next is uh, uh, coming to the call to action. So we have a smart switch forum. Um, uh, feel free to join the, the smart switch forum where we discuss about all this uh, detailed architecture and, uh, uh, and different uh, packet transformation technologies. And also, we have the dash sci uh, subgroup within Sonic. So you can uh, join that as well. And here is the link to contribution. And uh, we have the mailing list and the calendar for uh, the smart switch. So with that. Uh, Thank you, everyone. So any questions? Any questions? OK, we have a question. Um, what's the architecture that, uh, for the processor? Is it ARM or is it AMD? It's ARM processor on the DP, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you.